What is going on, everybody? Dallas coming back here with another video. And today, we're going to be doing an AFC East three-round mock draft. Uh, I want to be a little more consistent now that football is going to be finally here on Thursday. Super excited for that. Super pumped. I know you guys will be too. Uh, we're going to be growing the community, obviously, during the year. Praying to God the Draft Network gets their stuff back because they have such a beautiful layout. But we can't stop because they've stopped. That's why we're continuing to go with this PFN mock draft simulator. I'm fortunate that I can't pull up my draft boards as well to show you everything, but it is being built. I actually have almost a top 10 in essentially everything at this point, backed up by all 22 tape. Thank you to my guy Broshmo for being able to uh, give me entertainment while I was looking at all these guys. However, uh, you guys know the drill, no trades. That's, it's a little bit too much RNG, just pretty much simulated, brought up by the computer, not something I'm in the mood for. But the Jets, if we're sitting here at this spot, Derek Stingley's here. I don't think there's really much of an option. It's Evan Neal or Derek Stingley. Hint, I have Evan Neal as my number two guy in the draft. Derek Stingley is my number three. Um, I just genuinely don't think the quarterbacks are unique talents. Uh, they're, they're good talents. Don't get me wrong. Spencer Rattler is actually my new number one quarterback. However, Stingley and Neal are unique talents. So realistically, I mean, damn, Derek Stingley is almost generational as a corner, but so is Evan Neal. Again, this is way too early. We don't know what's going to happen. But if I want to look at the corner depth in this class, I can assume that probably um, – I believe the Jets actually have a second pick. So by the second pick, we can get – and spoiler alert, my number two corner, possibly Booth, or we can even go after a guy like Darian Kendrick. I know this is a cover three scheme. So um, Darian Kendrick, he is actually pretty damn good in man. But I think, honestly, any of these guys are going to be an excellent option for us. However, when we look at the offensive tackle class, there's just not much past Evan Neal, in my opinion. Charles Cross is my number two tackle, and I think that I have like a mid to late second on him. And that is being generous. That is me thinking very positively of what Charles Cross could do. So I think this is a pretty obvious one for me. I've actually talked myself into it. Evan Neal is going to the Jets. Of course, I'm going to get my shirt out of the way here. Got to come home from work a little bit early. So holla. But uh, we're going to see what else is going on in the draft right now. Kyer Elam going to the Cardinals. Excellent pickup by them. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll break this down when I go into my rankings list, but, you know, I have Kyer Elam as my number three, and he's my number 13 guy in the class, so perfect spot for him. Unfortunately, this kills me because this pick is always going to be one of the wide receivers. Garrett Wilson going extremely early. Traylon Burks, I probably wouldn't have gotten him because he's too much of a, a tight end style, like a receiver style tight end. Chris Olave going to the Giants is so bullshit, uh, but... Looking at the spot, I, we can't go after a wide receiver at the spot, right, guys? I don't think – I think John Mechie's maybe um, a late-round three guy at best. Justin Ross, injury issues. Uh, Drake London's a beast, but I don't think if you're at number 17, you're going after the fourth-best wide receiver in – oh, Lightning, love it uh, – in one of the more mediocre wide receiver drafts. I might say one of the worst wide receiver drafts, uh, definitely the worst that I've seen. So looking at other options, you could look at a running back here. Not going to disrespect Ramondre, Ramondre Stevenson, but there, there is legit concern there. Tackle, again, could be something we want to look at. Do you want to go after a guy like Sean Ryan, who weighs a lot less than he looks? Um, he's an absolute beast. There's just a lot of routes that we could go here. I still probably am going to go the wide receiver route, though. I think Drake London is unbelievable. I think that he is solidified as the number four guy, and it's not, it's not that he's not worth the 17th pick. It's just it hurts me inside to not be able to give them a, a Chris Olave or uh, a Garrett Wilson. But we're going to go Drake London anyways because they desperately need it, and he's going to be literally what Nikhil Harry should have been. So at this spot, again, not accepting trades because trades are BS. The Jets are sitting here, and oh, you, you guys are going to you guys are going to hear some some good stuff about um, my boy right there, Brandon Joseph, in the near future, but. We're sitting here, and we got Mod Gardner and Andrew Booth. So I like Andrew Booth, right? He is really talented, extremely fast twitch. Uh, Mod Gardner might be the better corner for the scheme, though, since we are running more of a cover three. We saw how Sala was able to make a slower guy like Richard Sherman be able to get back his some of his old form. I think Mod Gardner is not slow, but he doesn't have 
the unbelievable athleticism Andrew Booth does. So I think Sauce is probably going to be the better fit, and it's probably where we're going to go. But keep your eyes on Andrew Booth rising up draft boards when he has an outstanding combine. Him as well as, I mean, Derek Stingley's already at the top of everybody's draft board. I'm going to Maude Gardner here. I think he's a stud. I think he's great. And that's not to discount what the Jets already have there, but I think a bona fide cornerback one who can just totally lock it up. He and Bryce Hall would be a nasty duo. I'm a big Bryce Hall fan, so I'm pretty happy to see how he turned out. But still, Ahmad Gardner, light it up. This pick is a little bit of um, a cheat one for me because Nick Benito is sitting here, and I think that Nick Benito deserves to be going by 25. I think he's an excellent addition to this team. We already know how we got guys like Van Ginkle rushing off the edge. Nick Benito is a unique talent, and I think Flores is going to be able to make him work. I think he's the highest ceiling out of any of these edges, hands down. Uh, he's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. If you guys haven't watched him play, just he's it's insanely fun to watch. Now we got the Bills here. Bills, this is where I'm going to go a corner, and Booth is such a good fit. Man, I, he, he may be a little bit too fast, <laughs> uh, but, man, I just – there's no doubt in my mind. There's such a big gap after him. Darian Kendrick has his personality issues. That's why I was really um, adamant on being able to get a guy uh, like a Sauce Gardner right there. It's just because, again, I think Darian Kendrick fell asleep in his car with a gun in his hand or a gun in his lap. Just some stupid shit like that that's going to get you in big trouble in the NFL. Very happy that he has not gotten in any further trouble. However, at this spot, you it, both uh, Bro Shimon and I have a big fandom over this kid. Tyler Linderbaum. I know that we have... Um, I'm bugging the guy's name. I can't believe I'm bugging his name. The center, I believe he's from Penn State. He is solid, not great. And Linderbaum can honestly play guard because I don't think Van Roten is going to be the long-term option there either. We need to get a tackle or a guard. Linderbaum is the best interior offensive lineman, hands down, in this class. And there is a big, big drop-off after that. So next, our next pick, we got the Jets again. So I would be considering an edge player here, right? There's definitely some room for an edge player. Uh, Brenton Cox, definitely a talented guy. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson as well, really talented. Uh, looking if we can see any other guys down the board. I don't think I see any that are worth this pick. Xavier Thomas is a late round sneaky guy. So this could be a spot for even Adam Anderson to have a good spot on this roster. And honestly, it's probably where I'm going to go. Very, very, very electric player. Big fan of him. Might not fit perfectly, but I know that Robert Sala can make it work. He is... Just the talent is supreme to the rest of these guys. No disrespect to Brent Cox, who I think is extremely talented as well. I think you just take a shot on a guy like Adam Anderson at this point and be able to develop him from there. If I'm not mistaken, he's playing in that new Aziz Ojolari role where he's going to be, Aziz is going to be in a very similar situation to where uh, Adam Anderson is going to be moving in here into New York. So that'd be quite fun. Next, we got the Patriots. Patriots, I'm already looking at Brent Cox as just an eventual option there, but uh, we could definitely be looking at a couple of routes. Offensive guard, not something we ever need, which sucks because uh, Equanu is pretty damn talented. I like him a lot. Corner, I, I guess you could talk about that because, again, we might not be able to keep Stephon Gilmore as well as J.C. Jackson. Uh, I think Sean Ryan could be a really fun developmental guy because, uh, again, we are probably going to be losing Trent Brown. He actually gained the weight that it's rumored that he was supposed – that he did back in Oakland – or Las Vegas now, there could be legit cause for concern over his longevity in the NFL. And that's not going to fly, especially with Belichick. So I think Sean Ryan is an absolute beast. Like he is, or I was thinking about moving him into my tackle two spot. I just think he's a little bit too immobile. Thayer Munford is another amazing talent. I have him actually above Sean Ryan, but Sean Ryan, like if you're going to want to go with Mac Jones as your as your quarterback, Sean Ryan's better. If you're going to want to go with Cam Newton or a more mobile option, then we'll talk about Thayer Mumford, who's used to a guy like Justin Fields. But I think Sean Ryan is so good. You can put him on the interior offensive line, not that you need to, but he's good enough to sit and rest. And I'm not a huge fan of Yannick Juiced, so that's where my bias is going to come in. I think the upside for Sean Ryan is tenfold larger than Kajuiced. Even when I was looking at Kajust as a possible franchise guy back in the day, again, he was injured. So we can see what's going to happen with him. Again, I just think 
the upsides too much. Also, the Steelers are sitting here and we get to rob the Steelers, which hurts me inside. However, as sitting in the Patriots GMC, always good to make sure the Steelers get a guy like Abraham Lucas and not Sean Ryan, who fits them perfectly. Now with the, uh, I'm bugging, with the Dolphins on the board. This is a good spot, in my opinion, for a running back. However, Kyron Williams is everything that we already have. Kenny Brooks could be fun. I don't know if he's worth a second round pick though. Muhammad Ibrahim might be worth that third round pick that we're going to go after. So we're going to ditch this running back train right now. I know that, uh, that bro, I was going to kick my ass if I just select a running back, but sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a spot where it, this might be like where we just missed the playoffs or we're just barely in the playoffs. I'm trying to see we're at 62. Um, yeah, we're, we're like probably at what? I'm, I'm bugging right now. I'm trying to do math. 11 from that. We're at like what? Pick 21 ish. I could have just came, came back here. This is 25, but again, that's the Niners pick. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this might be the pick 19. So given that mental math is hard, I think that it's time to test out a fun new option, a quarterback, somebody who has a Fitz magic esque passing attack to him where he gets a red hot lights it up throws laser beams and where he gets cold. And then that's where you put a guy like Tua in. I just think that if Tua is not going to be able to put a Super Bowl caliber roster into the playoffs, or at least into a competitive position in the playoffs, he doesn't belong as a starting quarterback yet. He needs more time to develop, more time to grow. And maybe this isn't just the right place for him. And that's okay. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. He could be going here. could be going anywhere. This release before that, if it does happen. But a guy like Matt Corral can provide some actual excitement to this team. And it's something that I'm actually pretty happy about, uh, happy talking about at this spot. This could be a good spot for Kennedy Brooks. I think that, yeah, man, I just really think the bills are like one, uh, one running back away. However, we all know how much I love this one tight end here, Josh Wiley. He has very, very limited reps, but as a guy who goes to SMU, I watch Cincinnati crush my uh, Mustangs hopes every single year and it kills me inside, but it is fun as hell to see how good Josh Wiley is. And I think he is that good. He is my tight end one in the class. Call me crazy as Broshma has. It's just the way it rolls. So Josh Wiley, I think is an absolute stud. This is a perfect place for him. And I think it's the perfect spot where he's going to get drafted. Cause again, very limited reps. I think the upside is just unbelievable. He is dominant. He is a beast and he has crazy body control. Just watch the highlights. That's it. Cause there's not any actual tape on him out there. Cause there's so many limited reps, but man, he is a highlight machine and it's awesome to see. Now the jets sitting here, I'm going to be looking for a linebacker. Uh, Popo is actually somebody who I think is going to be a three down linebacker and he is definitely worth a round three pick. So I'm very inclined to be going after Popo here. Uh, again, I'm pretty big. I, I have a high affinity for him. Obviously, you could look at Ventral Miller, but if you're not going to be keeping a guy like Jared Davis, whose career has gone down the drain, then you're not going to be getting another Florida guy. I don't think that Florida guys like Ventral Miller would probably, they, they can fit. Salah can make anything happen. So I think I would take the guy with the highest upside right here. Owen Popo, beast absolute beast so um i was thinking about going after a slot corner maybe for the jets as well but i'm gonna give michael carter a year to prove himself because again the 49ers were targeting him as well fun fact so I, there, there's something to be had there uh, with the patriots here this is gonna be a great spot for ventral miller a lot of linebackers on one year deals guys so he could definitely get some reps in there or develop it just feels right you could of course go after a guy like josh Job, who's going to be around my 10th cornerback on the board which sucks, obviously, because Josh Job has some talent. But you could go after Darian Kendrick here. And given the fact that I've let the board fall this way, we are going to be picking up a guy with personality issues going to Bill Belichick. So I think that that's probably his best spot if he wants to be able to learn. There are the Steelers. And, I mean, the Steelers could use anything at this point. But I think that's just – it's fair to go that way. Uh, with the Dolphins, this might be coming up on our last pick. So we got the Bills, and then I think that's it, guys. So with the Dolphins, obviously we don't need interior offense alignment. We have even tackles who are now being bumped into interior offense alignment. Uh, center, I'm pretty sure will be fine. 
that sucks, right? Uh, but this is a perfect spot for a running back. And if I'm not mistaken, Kennedy Brooks is here. I think he's a solid uh, every down running back. He took it last year off. And I think there's a lot to be had there. Kennedy Brooks is going to be a solid addition to this team. It's a third round running back, guys. I don't think there's anything to complain about. Of course, you take him away from the Bills as well. So the Bills sitting here, I think they're a perfect spot for Muhammad Ibrahim. Again, he's going to be more of this three down back who has some power to him. I don't think, I think people are underrating Mohamed Ibrahim. He came back for one more year. I thought it was stupid as hell because you're losing, they lost their top two targets and now they're stuck with Chris Ottman Bell. No disrespect to him, but he's no Tyler Johnson or Rashad Bateman. And he's going to be the focal point in that offense and he's getting older. So it might be an overdraft. I'm probably going to draft him anyways, but we could look elsewhere. We could look at some extra guard depth if we want to. You got Zion Johnson here would be a pretty damn good addition to this Bill squad. Uh, somebody who I have a big affinity for centers are all off. So I, I don't really think that there's any good ones that we could be had right now. A uh, safety, you know, there is some guys here, Colby Harvey Peel, somebody who, you know, that I had a big affinity for uh, th- besides that, there's not really much that I think is worth this pick. You could of course try to get some like a developmental guy like Damone Clark uh, as, or Deshaun white as somebody for a, a developmental player, but and even Josh Job, have we gone? We got in a corner. Yeah, we did. We ended up getting a uh, booth, but even Josh Job would be pretty good value here. And honestly, I'm going to pull the trigger on it because you can never have too many corners. And Josh Job has some bust written on him. AJ Hampton, another guy who is sneaky, pretty good. So we're going to be doing that right now. Josh Job, again, you're just getting the best value right there. And I think that's the only way you're going to win this division is if you have some depth because it's a pretty damn good division. And you're going to want to be able to win in the playoffs. So that is the draft, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Obviously, I can slip up here and there. It happens to everybody. It'll happen to even the best YouTubers. And it'd be nice to be in that list someday. But I'm going to earn it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.